and welcome to IB Physics Help video podcast. This is episode number four, coming to you from New York City. Today's topic is types of motion. Uniform motion, uniformly accelerated motion, uniform circular motion, simple harmonic motion. What is the difference between all these types of motion? Some of these names can be a little bit misleading. We'll clarify all these aspects in today's podcast. The study of objects in motion is part of a section of physics called mechanics. We can broadly divide the study of motion into two subsections, kinematics and dynamics. In kinematics, we are only interested in describing the motion in itself. In other words, we are simply trying to answer the question, how an object moves. Dynamics refers to the section of physics that takes into account forces and masses and their effects on the movement of bodies. In other words, it answers the question, why objects move the way they do. Our focus today is on kinematics. More precisely, we are going to present a simple classification of the types of motion that you might come across during your physics course. Any motion is either uniform or accelerated. Uniform motion refers to a motion for which the acceleration is zero. That means that the velocity vector is constant. The term accelerated motion refers to motions in which the velocity changes in time. That means that the acceleration vector is not zero. We distinguish here two subtypes. One, in which the acceleration vector is non-zero but constant during the motion. And the other, in which the acceleration changes during the motion. An accelerated motion in which the acceleration is constant is called uniformly accelerated motion. Two typical examples of motion in which the acceleration changes are uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. Let's now concentrate on the four examples given here. Uniform motion, uniformly accelerated motion, uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. In each case, we'll try to identify their main features. Let's start with the easiest, uniform motion. This motion is characterized by the fact that the velocity vector does not change during the motion. In other words, the motion is at a steady speed and in a straight line. As you probably know, acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over time or simply the rate at which velocity changes in time. Here, the velocity does not change and therefore there is no acceleration. The next example is uniformly accelerated motion. The main feature of this type of motion is that the velocity changes at a constant rate. In other words, the acceleration is constant. This refers to both the magnitude and the direction of the acceleration vector. Let's consider a simple example. If an object moves along a straight line and accelerates at a constant rate of 2 meters per second squared, that indicates that the speed increases by 2 meters per second every second. In other words, if let's say the speed is now 1 meter per second, it is 3 meters per second one second later and 5 meters per second one second after that. Be careful to make the distinction between the words uniform as in uniform motion and uniformly, as in uniformly accelerated motion. The first, uniform, is an adjective and refers to the motion itself. Whereas the second one, uniformly, is an adverb and refers to the manner in which an object accelerates. Let's now move on to the next example of accelerated motion. Uniform circular motion. A circular motion is the movement of a body that follows a circular path. In other words, the trajectory of the moving body is either a circle or an arc of a circle. 
Let me start by saying that uniform circular motion is not a uniform motion. Yes, that's right. It is not a uniform motion, which is defined as steady speed in a straight line. When the path followed by a moving object is a circle, that automatically implies a change in direction, which means that at least the direction of the velocity vector changes. In other words, we are dealing here with an accelerated motion. Why then calling it uniform motion when in fact it isn't? Well, a uniform circular motion is simply defined as a circular motion in which the speed is constant. In other words, a body undergoing such a motion covers equal distances in equal time intervals, hence the word uniform. Without going into further detail, let me just say that in this type of accelerated motion, the magnitude of the acceleration vector does not change, but its direction does. Our last example of accelerated motion is the simple harmonic motion. An example of such a motion is the one undergone by an object attached to a spring. When you pull the object away from its initial undisturbed or equilibrium position and then let it go, the elastic pull of the spring takes over and in conjunction with the weight of the object drives it above and below the point of equilibrium as seen on the screen. The net pull on the object attached to the spring is called the restoring force. The restoring force changes both its direction and its size during this motion. As a consequence, both the direction and the magnitude of the acceleration change in time. The magnitude of the acceleration is in fact proportional to the displacement of the object from its equilibrium position, and the direction of the acceleration is always opposite to that of the displacement. In future episodes, I intend to present in more detail each of the motions mentioned in today's podcast. Let's recap the main points of today's podcast. Uniform motion is a motion at a steady speed in a straight line. The acceleration in this case is zero. Uniformly accelerated motion is one in which the acceleration is not zero, but constant throughout the motion. Uniform circular motion is one in which a moving body moves in a circle at a steady speed. This is a type of accelerated motion. Simple harmonic motion is the motion in which the restoring force is proportional to the displacement and has a direction opposite to that of the displacement. That implies that the acceleration vector changes both its direction and its magnitude. The main purpose of this podcast was to draw your attention to the characteristics of some of the most common types of motion. When studying or solving mechanics problems, make sure that you identify the type of motion you are dealing with and apply the appropriate set of equations. We've reached the end of this fourth podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write me at ibphysicshelp at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.